Dynamic compressors are used wherever possible as a result of their low maintenance requirements. The single stage integral gear centrifugal compressor that you can see here allows the use of a dynamic compressor in many applications where positive displacement compressors have previously been used. The two types of dynamic compressors are centrifugal and axial. In the next couple of videos, we'll cover the different types of centrifugal compressors, their design, their general principles of operation, and we'll have an introduction to their main mechanical components. Of course, an in-depth discussion will be provided to you on these topics further ahead in the course. Then we will briefly discuss axial compressors. Now you can find various types of centrifugal compressors based on their designs and configurations. Among them we can name centrifugal single stage compressors, centrifugal single stage integral gear compressors, centrifugal multi-stage horizontally split compressors and centrifugal multi-stage vertically split compressors. Let's begin with the single stage centrifugal compressor. Here you can see a cut view of a typical single stage centrifugal compressor. This type of compressors is widely spread in refining, petrochemical and process industries. Let's see together the different elements or components of this special rotating equipment. Here you have the suction of the compressor and here the discharge. Notice how the discharge is perpendicular to the suction or in other words radial. For this reason, these types of compressors are also referred to as radial compressors. Here you have the volute of the compressor, the inlet guide vane, the impeller and impeller eye, and finally the rotating shaft. For now, we just list the equipment and get to know their location. Then, in later videos, there will be a dedicated in-depth discussion covering each component individually. Now, perhaps the most important element in a centrifugal compressor is the impeller. An example of an open impeller is seen here. This impeller is made of blades and an eye. And here a simplified drawing of the same impeller that we will use extensively in later videos to illustrate the flow of gas inside the compressor and the relationship between the velocity of the gas as it crosses the impeller and the head or energy generated by the compressor. Here you can see a front cut view of the compressor. The discharge is located here, the impeller, the eye of the impeller, the blades, and the volute. Notice here how the volute is shaped like a never increasing spiral. The principle of operation of a centrifugal compressor is very similar to that of a centrifugal pump. The gas to be compressed enters the compressor through the inlet nozzle or suction nozzle. The gas is then directed into the eye of the impeller. The impeller is attached to a shaft. The shaft spins and is powered by a driver which is not shown here. The gas, once it enters into the eye of the impeller, is trapped between the impeller blades. The blades contain the gas and impart speed to it as it passes from the impeller eye toward the outside diameter of the impeller. As the gas accelerates in velocity, a zone of low pressure is created in the eye of the impeller, according to the Bernoulli principle, so as velocity goes up, pressure goes down. The gas then leaves the outside diameter of the impeller at a high rate of speed, and then immediately slams into the internal casing wall of the volute. At this point, the gas's centrifugal velocity comes to an abrupt halt, and the velocity is converted into pressure, but this time according to the reverse of the Bernoulli principle, 
as velocity goes down, pressure goes up. The gas is then conducted around the volute housing in a never increasing escape channel. And as the pathway increases as depicted here, the velocity decreases and even more pressure is added to the gas, again according to the Bernoulli principle. Then the gas leaves the compressor at discharge pressure, prepared to overcome the resistance in the system. The following figure shows a simplified sketch of the gas path across the impeller. And here a simplified animation to better illustrate this concept. For now, what I want you to remember and to understand is that the flow from a centrifugal compressor is mostly governed by the speed of the driver and the height of the impeller blades. The pressure or head that the compressor can generate is mostly governed by the speed of the driver and the diameter of the impeller. Other factors play a lesser role in the compressor flow and pressure, like the number, pitch and thickness of the impeller blades and the internal clearances. We'll see this in details further ahead. Multi-stage centrifugal compressors can be broken down into two families. Multi-stage horizontally split compressors and multi-stage vertically split compressors. In a multi-stage horizontally split centrifugal compressor, the casing is divided into upper and lower halves along the horizontal center line of the compressor. The horizontal split casing allows access to the internal component of the compressor without, of course, disturbing the rotor to casing clearances or bearing alignment. If possible, pipe and nozzles should be mounted on the lower half of the compressor casing, as depicted in this example, to allow disassembly of the compressor without removal of the process piping. On the other hand, for multi-stage radially split centrifugal compressors, the casing is constructed as a complete cylinder with one end of the compressor removable to allow access to the internal components. Multi-stage vertically split centrifugal compressors are commonly called barrel compressors. Here you can see the cut section of a horizontally split multi-stage centrifugal compressor. In multi-stage compressors, after compression across one stage, the gas is routed to the entry of the next impeller and so on. So, the gas is progressively compressed. In this video, we'll see together the different elements or components that make multi-stage centrifugal compressors. The objective is to list these elements and get to know their location inside the machine. Then, in later videos, you will find a dedicated in-depth discussion covering each of these components individually. So here you have the suction nozzle of the compressor and here the discharge nozzle, the rotating shaft, the impellers in plural, and in our example here you have five impellers making this compressor a five-stage centrifugal compressor, and finally the diffusers. The flow of gas across the various stages is now depicted using blue arrows. Now, the model of a typical horizontally split centrifugal compressor is seen here. Here you have the suction of the compressor, the discharge nozzle, the casing upper half, the casing lower half, and here you have the bearing housing. Let's remove the casing upper half and view the internals. On removing the casing upper half, it is seen that the diffuser assembly exists below the casing. Let's now remove the diffuser upper section and see what's below it. The shaft and impeller assembly are seen here. Let's now remove the shaft and impeller assembly. The diffuser lower section is seen. And here, 
the diffuser lower section is seen from a different angle. Let's now apply the same methodology for a vertically split multi-stage centrifugal compressor. A typical example of a vertically split multi-stage centrifugal compressor is seen here, with its corresponding cut section. So here you have the section of the compressor, the discharge, the casing in form of a barrel, the rotating shaft, the impellers, the balance piston, the journal bearings, the thrust bearing, and the mechanical seals. Of course, each of these elements will be covered in details in a later section. Let's now disassemble the various components toward understanding their respective arrangement in this typical barrel centrifugal compressor. We began by removing the bearing housing cover. Then the bearing housing is removed. Next, we split the thrust bearing assembly. Then we remove the thrust collar assembly. Next, we remove the coupling. Then we split the radial bearing on the non driver end then the radial bearing on the driver end. Then we remove the sealing arrangement on the non-driver end. Then the sealing arrangement on the driver end. Now we can unbolt the casing. Then we remove the casing cover. And now we are ready to extract the bundle assembly and thus the various components of this compressor are dismantled. Now the bundle assembly of this compressor is shown here. Let us disassemble the individual components. First we split the barrel. And here you can see the diffuser and the shaft and impeller assembly. We remove the upper half of the diffusers, as seen here, then the lower half. The last piece, made of the shaft and the impellers mounted onto it, is called the compressor rotor. And here you can see a real example of a rotor of a typical barrel compressor.